Hello and welcome back to the Villa View, where we're revisiting our predictions from the start of August, I think it was, when we went for over our predictions. We're going to revisit this after the transfer window is shut, because obviously the landscape could be very different by the end of August. So this is just what we think now, and then we're going to go over them again and get a chance to change our predictions. Transfer window's finished, so me and Dan are going to go through all of the predictions again and see how much our thoughts have changed after the end of the transfer window with so many transfers happening. We're going to go through the Championship, all of our predictions, and then also general ones such as the Premier League and Champions League. So let's get into it with the Championship, Dan. With where you said Villa were finishing, where do you think they're going to finish now? I originally said that we'd get sixth. That was obviously before we made a lot of our signing, so I've re revisited it slightly and gone with I've gone with fourth. I don't want to be overly optimistic at this stage still because it's still early doors and again if I was offered sixth now I'd absolutely snap your hand off but I think we were a lot stronger than we were when I made that prediction of sixth so I'm going to go with fourth. See I went for fourth last time yeah. and since then my confidence has grown even more ever the optimist that I am so I'm going to say second. I'd be happy with second. Mm. I'm just trying to curb my enthusiasm a little bit because I'm, I always over egg things and always go over excited. I got over excited about Tim yeah. Sherwood being the next coming of Christ and he wasn't. So I'm going to cautiously say fourth for now. So I'll let you go with your t new top six, shall I say, because you had Wigan in there last time. Appalling shout. Well, might, maybe he's an appalling shout, but I've changed. They're not, no longer in my top six prediction. So I originally said Sheffield Wednesday top, Newcastle second, and then Norwich, Brighton, Wigan, and Villa. So I've now changed it to, I don't like myself for predicting this, but Newcastle first, Brighton for second now. I've put Huddersfield in the mix as third, Villa fourth, Norwich fifth. And even though they've not had a great start, I'm going to stick with Sheffield Wednesday, getting into the playoffs in sixth. So I'm still going to go with Newcastle to win the league, but I'm going to go for Villa to finish second. Brighton, I said second last time, they're going to finish third. I still think Sheffield Wednesday will make it. Then I think Norwich, I don't think they're going to make it. So they're going to drop out of mine as well. So I'm going to have Huddersfield in there, and then QPR is my other one. That we were always thinking of putting in, just because I think Hasselbank is a good manager. But then Wolves as well. Things have changed a lot, obviously, since. I think they're another wild shout to be put in the mix, perhaps, instead of Huddersfield. I think those are the sort of teams you can be looking at, though. And Fulham as well. They've had a decent start. Well, the league is, at the moment, very tight, and as we've seen, anyone can be anyone. So it's literally anyone's game. Even, like, Forest, who I predicted to go down, like... Wouldn't surprise me to see them in, in the top six, to be honest. They've been scoring a lot of goals, although they have lost one of their better players. It's just the championship is still so, so difficult to call. My relegation zone, I've said Rotherham United, Blackburn Rovers. But then I said Fulham. I think that won't happen. Um, instead of Fulham, I'm going to go with Preston. Well, basically, how the bottom three is now. I think Preston are going to struggle this season. You've not been very adventurous there, picking the bottom three, as is. Well. Two of them I picked anyway, so... Yeah, I, I picked them too as well, to be fair, but I didn't want to pick the three that are bottom at the moment. Shooting in Cardiff instead of Forest. I'm not, not sure of them from what I've, what I've seen so far. Yeah. And I don't, I, think, I don't think Forest would be down there because I think they'll score too many goals. Well, it's interesting you say that. They've conceded the most and scored the most so far this season, I think I read. Top goal scorer, mine are totally like... Pff, I don't even know why I said them now, looking at them. I bet yours first. I said Forestieri would be the top scorer yeah. in the championship. But then he yeah. went off and had a few sulks. I'm not sure he always plays up front for Sheffield Wednesday nowadays. I think sometimes he plays on the wing. So I've changed it just because they have scored so many goals. And I do think this guy's a good player. And he's just signed a five-year contract, I believe. So I've gone with Britus on Belonga to be top scorer in the championship. I think he's raring to go after missing so much of the, of the last year with the through injury. I think he's raring to go. He's scored three goals already. I just think he's a, he's a good striker, a, a good finisher, and he's powerful. And I think he will score a lot of goals at this level. So I've gone for him. I was tempted to go with, with Codger, but I'm going to go with the Samba Longa. I don't want to put too much pressure on Villa players at the moment. <laughs> See, I said Kimar Roof or Ayozo Perez. So um, I don't want to say it, but I'm going to go with Dwight Gale. I didn't think he'd score many this season. I didn't think he'd be playing in a position where he could do as a number nine. He's scored four already this season. And if Newcastle are going to go up, they're going to need their goal scorer. And for me, I think it is Dwight Gale. I think he's got bags of pace. And in honesty, I do wish we'd have gone for him. But I think 
personally, I can't say a Villa player because I think we've got too many good strikers. They'll score a share of the goals each, and we won't have one individual striker that's leaps and bounds above the rest for scoring goals. Top scorer for Villa, I said Ross McCormack if he signed last time. At the moment, I'm going to stick with Ross McCormack. I would have gone with McCormack, but I think because he plays a bit more withdrawn than the other forwards, I don't think he's getting into the positions that he possibly could do if he was playing properly up front. He seems to be operating as more of a, a number 10 in a lot of games at the moment. So I'm going to go with, with Codger, or as I'm going to call him, JK, because I'm still not sure I've got the pronunciation. I went with Ayer to begin with, just because he was pretty much the only striker of note yeah. that we had, and I didn't have to take Gusted at that point. I'm not... Gusted probably now, I would say, will score goals, but I'm not convinced. I think out of all the strikers, I think he'll probably get the least playing time, because I think he'll be used as an impact sub. So I'm going to go with Codger. Yeah. 18 goals. That's a brave prediction, but like I say with mine, I think we'll score a lot of goals between the players, but not one player stand out above the rest. I mean, if Codger scored 18, Gasset scored 10, 15, AU chips in, McCormack chips in with 10 or so, then not complaining, but either way, I think we've got plenty of goal scorers inside. So, of the teams we did pick for the playoffs, we should have answered this question before, but who do you think will go up for the playoffs out of the teams you picked? I went for Villa Brighton final last time, and yeah. The way I've done the predictions this time means that Villa Brighton can still be yeah. a final. So I'm going to go for Villa to beat Brighton in the playoffs after we get rid of Nor- Norwich. I think it is in the semis. I did say Villa would win last time, but they're not obviously in, in contention this time. So go with Brighton to go up through the playoffs after beating QPR. Quite like to see Brighton go, to be honest. I yeah. quite like him. So next up, What's next? player of the season and the I'm going to hang my head in shame at this moment in time because I'm going to get berated in the comments for saying this player in the past. I said Gary oh, Gardner to the player of the season last time. Damn me. He's <laughs> a stinker. So now, You've got as much I'm going to go with uh, him, I think. Jack Grealish. I'm going to stick with him. Hopefully his injury is not too bad. I mean, he started the season well. He scored a couple of goals. He's a fan's favourite. I think he is, natural ability-wise, our, our best player. I'm, I'm going to stick with him as well. I think he'll win our player of the year this season. As for young player of the year, I said Jack Grealish last time. We're going to change that to Aaron Tishibola based on the start of the season he's had been very solid for us. Yeah, I'd say Tishibola as well, but do you reckon that there's a possibility that Grealish could end up winning both? I think there's a high chance, considering it's Villa fans voting, obviously. But do you think if he got the most votes for both, the club would still give him the young both. player, or do you think they'd give, drop it down to second? I think they'd give him both. I'm going to say Grealish made... for young player. As some of my other oh, shouts might be really poor, so I'm going to cover myself with greenish for yeah. both. The next one was overall best player in the Football League, well, Championship. This one again, well, I said Kemar Roof. Has he scored so yet? Again, anything? I don't think he has. I, I, don't, I can't score. think of anything today that he has done, but I don't That's know who cool to actually say. I don't know who to say instead, because there's been different players popping up. You see... Tammy Abraham's had a blistering start to the season, which is possibly an outsider shout, but at the moment, Jack Grealish, to me, or Matt Ritchie. The simple reason I don't want to be biased towards Jack, I'm going to have to go with Matt Ritchie. Yeah, he got berated for saying Grealish last time, so you can't not stick with him this time. To be fair to me, I said it in July. Yeah, and to be fair, he's lived up to his expectations so far, two goals so far, played quite well. He's likely to be a big part of that. I'm, I'm, st- I'm stick with you. I don't really care what people say. To be yeah. honest, I, I believe in him. We're moving forwards now to general stuff, so to speak. We're going to look at the Premier League. So we'll start with the top six. So I said to Chelsea, then City, Man U, Arsenal fourth, Everton fifth, and Spurs sixth. Mm-hmm. It's difficult. You can't really separate Chelsea, City, and Man U at the moment because they've all. Started really well. They've all got new managers and they all look like their main business. Okay, Chelsea first. I'm going to stick with it. City second. Man U third. Arsenal fourth. And then I'm going to switch Spurs and Everton around and say Spurs fifth, Everton sixth. Um, Chelsea to win it. Man City second. Man United third. Liverpool, I said top four last time. I still think they'll be in the top six, but I think they'll be sixth. I think fourth will be Spurs. And I think Arsenal will go into that top six for me. And West Ham will drop out of it. Relegation? Got, I went with Hull, Watford and West Brom. And I'm going to stick with that. I'm not, I'm not changing it. I can't. They're, Watford are at the bottom now, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, but they won't sustain it. They'll go, they, they won't have enough. 
They haven't got enough players. West Brom, just eke out results. Their fans are not happy. They are not happy with what's going on. I don't know whether the deadline day signings have changed that. I don't think they've bought enough. Pulis is a dinosaur. Villa fans looking to berate the baggies, but that's, that's not what I'm doing. But I wouldn't say it if I didn't think they would be down there. And I just don't think they've, they've bought enough. Champions League winner. Didn't go too well last time. When I said Chelsea would win the Champions League. When they're not in the Champions League, I'm not going to make the same mistake again. So I'll let you go first with your Champions League prediction. Staying with Bayern. Ancelotti knows how to win the Champions League. Done it loads of times. As you say, Ancelotti is experienced. I think it will be time that Bayern actually win a Champions League. And I just think that Ancelotti is the most experienced man in European football right now. Next one is Premier League top scorer. I said Michi Batashui last time off Chelsea. And I'm going to stick with Chelsea player. But I'm going to go with Diego Costa this time. I can't say past Aguero. He looks like he can score a hat-trick every game, especially the way they're playing under Guardiola. He'll, he'll play enough games to be, to be a top scorer, definitely. I'm, I can't see it past Aguero. I can't see anything but Aguero getting the golden boot. How about Champions League top scorer? I said Suarez, so I'll, st- I'll stick with it. I'm going to go with Ronaldo still. I've still got Ronaldo there. How about Premier League player of the season? My player hasn't played yet. Is it Payet? No, I said McIntyre. I said Payet, which I'm not sure about now. West Ham haven't convinced me early doors. I know they've got a lot of injuries, but I think... They're going to struggle to adapt to their new home. I'm going to go with Hazard. I'm going to go with Hazard. Chelsea. I don't want to say the same player as you, but he has been outstanding so far. But then, as an outsider shout, if Man City are going to continue this form they're on right now, Raheem Sterling's been unplayable so far in the Premier League. I'm going to say Raheem Sterling for player of the season. Final question. World player of the season. Ronaldo won the Champions League, won the Euros. There's not going to be anyone else. No chance. Well, I said Bale last time. I'm going to stick with Bale. Bale perhaps deserves it. Wales yeah. did had an unbelievable Euros. He carried them, to be honest, at times. Yeah, he did. It's, it's usually how Ronaldo and Messi, isn't it? And Ronaldo's had the better. Yeah. Well, Messi's had points where he's been injured and he had a stinker at the Copa America. So I think it would be between Bale and Ronaldo. I have a funny feeling this time. Especially given both teams' performances in the Euro, the countries respectively, and the fact they're in the Champions League. So, bail for me. And that rounds up our predictions as we go over them again. So, Dan, thank you for joining me today for going back over the predictions. I hope we've got through it unscathed with less stick for us this time for our predictions. Although, my Raheem Sterling one, I have a funny feeling that one won't go down too well with some people. So, thanks for joining me today, Dan. No problem. Pleasure. So if you did enjoy this video, make sure you drop us a like below. Comment in your own predictions. Comment your own predictions. We'll drop below the questions. Get your predictions in for the championship ones. We want to see what you're saying. Make sure you head over to our social media channels. But that's the Villa View for today with our rest of our predictions with a recap.